Morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, Anit. Okay. Shall I start now, sir? Oh, one second, one second, just. Okay. Ah, Praveen, you know, on the Lomach Pen, you know, Rasana Pina, Saran Ryan, Saran Ryan, and the Kentucky, why some people think that I forgot to mention that just write a Saran Ryan, huh? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah madam, yeah, please, I'm ready now, yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, sir. <laughs> sir good morning, sir. Principal, sir. Very good morning to all of you, including the external. Uh, good morning, sir. Subject experts. Respected principal and dean, School of Life Sciences, Professor Krishna Reddy, sir. Respected external expert, Professor Brahmanandam, sir. My dear faculty members, research scholars, dear students. Good morning, one and all. So a warm welcome to you all for the open PhD Viva voice of Mrs. Uh, Anjum Mobin, my research scholar. Sir, with your permission, shall I ask her to present her thesis work? Ramanandam, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. 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 Anjum. Yeah. 
good morning sir good morning uh, anju respect to dr k riyazuni sir madam from my guide and dean of faculty sciences krishna reddy sir and external expert sir brahmanandam sir and all the faculty members students uh, we welcome you all in my presentation of phd of open viva voice which entitled as in silico identification of novel drug targets in human colorectal cancer from the bioactive compounds of cetharanthus roseus and moringa oleifera and green synthesis of ruthenium oxide nanoparticles and biological characters so i will introduce myself myself is sayada anju movin a research scholar in the department of biotechnology and bioinformatics working under the supervision of dr k riyazuni sir madam associate professor of department of biotechnology and bioinformatics to my purpose of research theme our research plan was to engross both biotechnology and bioinformatics theme by erecting plants as our preliminary resource material coming to the introduction part of my phd thesis this thesis can be classified in the three parameters regarding to introduction number 1 is the selection of the plant material number 2 is the selection of the disease and number 3 is the selection of the metal precursor for the green synthesis purpose so coming to the first part selection of the plant material the two plants materials we have chosen for our research work is the cetharanthus roseus number 1 which is an imperative evergreen herbaceous medicinal plant belongs to the family of apoaceae and commonly known as cynanthara and derives its name from the uh, greek language cetharanthus means pew and roseus means red or rosy or rose next second plant we have chosen is the moringa oleifera which belongs to the family of moringaceae and ethnopharmacologically valuable plant commonly known as drumstick and with a sole species of genus 10 to 12 species and it derives its name from the uh, tamil word morangai meaning twisted pod alluding to the end pod so number 2 is the selection of the disease why we have we have shifted this uh, plants to the disease we will discuss in the objective two the selection of the disease we have chosen is the colorectal cancer which is the cancerous growth in the colon rectal or appendix ranking the second commonest explanation for mortality of gender around the globe and the fifth most common cancer in india following breast cervix lip oral cavity and lung cancer as per the literature of mayer et al 2018 the risk factors associated with the crc includes lifestyle older age and inherited genetic disorders that only occur in a fraction of population the exact mechanism of the molecular pathogenesis and engaged genes were largely unclear and it, it's remained a global challenge in the field of research then the third parameter is the selection of the metal precursor for grain synthesis Here we have chosen a metal precursor of ruthenium oxide nanoparticles is ruthenium chloride which is an hydrated form and coming to his history it was first observed by the kk klaus who is a russian chemist uh, the name itself shows that ruthenia is a latin word which meaning russia as it was first discovered by the russian chemist kk klaus in the year 1844 the element we calling as ruthenium and this ruthenium belongs to the family of the d block element and it is a transition metal oxide having the atomic number of 44 and the atomic mass 101.07 like that and this um, element is freely found in nature more frequently with some other platinum group materials of the d block element such as platinum palladium iridium etc and this is the introduction part and next coming to our literature survey Here, a part of this work has been carried out and published as review article in the current nano materials. Actually, the literal literature survey is performed on the four categories: work reported on the selected plants, and in silico studies of the plant doping and simulation studies, and third is the work reported on the colorectal cancer using natural products, and the fourth is the work. reported on the ruthenium oxide nanoparticles but today we are presenting a literature mainly focus on the ruthenium oxide nanoparticles because we are having as one of the objective in my research work so this is the up to date uh, data related to the green synthesis of ruthenium containing nanoparticles uh, especially in case of green synthesis not chemical synthesis in chemical synthesis ruthenium oxide 
oxide nanoparticles have been characterized and may have many more applications, but pertinent to the green synthesis of protein containing nanoparticles, these are the only nine citations we have found. Among those nine citations, only two citations are regarding the ruthenium oxide nanoparticles and the remaining seven are ruthenium nanoparticles via greener approach. Until 2002, uh, there are no such reports available pertinent to the green synthesis of protein containing nanoparticles. The first report was reported by the Srinivasa et al. in the year 2012 by using the pseudomonas originaceae. And later on, some citations were available. Next, coming to the basic point of this ruthenium oxide nanoparticle, what we have chosen, Kanan et al. in the year 2015 was the first person who has taken this ruthenium oxide nanoparticles along with the application in the antibacterial field, where he has taken the dried leaves of Acalypho indica, which belongs to the family of Euphorbiac. There they observed that the lattice parameter he has observed was orthorhombic structure with the size nanoparticle 6 to 25 nanometers. And here, the difference lies between the ruthenium nanoparticles and the ruthenium oxygen is based upon the method they follow. Here for the synthesis, we followed the method of bioreduction calcination method, means bioreduction followed by the calcination. Hence, at the 600 degree centigrade, we have been calcinated the uh, product after synthesis. After that, we got the ruthenium oxide nanoparticles. And the second report is my our present objective which has uh, detail in the objective four. So next coming to our aim and objectives of the study, the overall aim of the extent work is to find the novel drug targets in human colorectal cancer from these bio compounds of Etheranthus roseus and Moringa villifera using integrated computational approach and green synthesis of ruthenium oxide nanoparticles and biological characterization. Coming to the specific objectives, the number one is the isolation identification of the metabolites from the leaf extracts of two materials by GCMS study. And second is the identification of the biomarker signatures and key pathways associated with the colorectal cancer insights from an integrated computational approach. And the third is the evaluation of these tentatively identified GCMS compounds in the objective one with the plants, with the with these plants, Catharanthus roseus and Moringa volifera through docking and simulation studies. And fourth is the phytomediated approach for synthesizing ruthenium oxide nanoparticles, physiochemical and biological characterizations from the extracts of these two plants. So uh, this, is, this slide gives the gist of our research experimental design where we have chosen the two plants material as leaves and the solvent chosen can be categorized into two. One is the aqueous methanol and the other is the only aqueous. Only aqueous goes for the nanotechnology purpose. We have brain synthesized the nanometers by using these plants and after that we characterize them with the characterization methods. And after, after this, we have applied this nanoparticles for the three applications areas in biological process. And next coming to the solvent system of the aqueous and methanol, we have grouped this uh, to the wet lab as well as dry lab. Here we have isolated the secondary metabolites from these two plant resources by, by soxalate extraction, pollen chromatography and GCMS study. From that, we have taken the crude extract to those we have performed this GCMS analysis from GF GCMS analysis, we got the tentatively identified compounds, not the exact, the whole extract kind is the tentatively identified compounds. After getting this tentatively uh, compounds, we refined based on the presence or option of common structure which are present in those two plants. And finally, we got 97 GCMS compounds. And next, after that, we have chosen the uh, cell disease nothing but the disease selection, which is we are calling as colorectal cancer, because these two plants, some of the citations show that the, these metabolic extracts shows the, uh, they have their role in their colorectal cancer. So we have chosen this one, we will discuss in the later stages. And after selecting this disease, we perform the gene expression analysis via bioinformatics tools, where we have identified, screened and validated by using different resources. After the finalization of the hub genes, we have chosen STAT3, which is as a novel drug target for our further objective, where we are discussing in the later stages. And after getting these ligands, as well as uh, published in uh, inhibitors, nothing but regnofenoc and ironotecon, and the protein, 
Mm, we perform the structure based virtual screening, nothing but docking process. And after that, we go on for the simulation studies. There we consider that lead one maybe or lead two will be useful as a drug candidate if synthesized in vitro and in vivo conditions. So, so coming to our first objective, our first objective is the isolation identification of secondary metabolites of these two plants. Here, the work described in this objective has been published in the data in brief. So coming to the introduction of this one, uh, source material we have chosen as the leaves where we have taken from the YVU campus and Yamoringa olifera from near Raichoti God and the study site which is this YVU campus. Leaf sampling were harvested at the vegetative phase. So coming to the process of methodology part, in the preparation we have gathered this one and leaves has been cleaned, dried and grinded into fine powder and stored at minus 20 degrees centigrade and the solvent system chosen is the two aqueous and methanolic and the isolation techniques we have applied is the succinate extra extraction. Uh, phytochemical screening, column chromatography, GCMS analysis. And the method we followed for the soxet extraction process was the Sadasivam and Manakum in the year 1996. This figure illustrates the soxet operators and the experimental setup of the leaf sample extraction. So coming to our result sports, this is the result of the phytochemical screening, which evaluates that um, Almost both plants have the numerous compounds, bioactive compounds, but in particular to the Catharanthus rhesus, we are finding the alkaloids in rich in the absence of the saponins, and whereas in Moringa velifera, they are rich in the phenols, terpenoids, flavonoids, and glycosides. So coming to the, after performing this uh, uh, phytochemical screen, we go on from the Soxlet apparatus where so column chromatography is performed. This column chromatography is based on the mixture when we are getting uh, heated up with the upon, based upon the affinities, relative affinities, we are going to degrade. And those can be passed on to the GCMS work. And uh, in the GCMS analysis for the Catharanthus roses aqueous extract, we got the 25 compounds, bioactive compounds. The main component, sorry, the main abundant compound found was the amino 1 butanol, and the minor compound is the phenol 2,4 bis 1 1 dimethyl ester. And in similar way, in the GCMS analysis was performed from the methanolic catharanthus extract, where we got the bioactive compounds as 40. And in the same manner, MOL uh, aqueous extract as 20 and MOL methanolic extract as 20 means each of the Moringa alkene compounds constitutes each 20 compounds. So this is the table where we are going to find out the phytochemicals tentatively identified based on the retention time of Catharanthus roses by GCMS. Here, some of the citations show our uh, also having a uh, similar structure where we are getting the um, huge in all in the means uh, previous, uh, previous citations are also have in previous citations uh, contains compounds which are having in our sample also, which we are dealing in the next step. And, and that this is the phyto, uh, phytochemicals tentatively identified based on the retention time of Moringa velifera by GCMS, each was 20. Means 20 in the aqualic, uh, uh, sorry, uh, aqueous extract as well as in the methanolic extract. So conclusion of our category is finally our analysis through GCMS of both extracts reveals a total of 105 compounds. These are the tentatively identified compounds means we have taken the crude extract. We are not gone for the refinement process. 105 tentatively identified compounds were found. And among these compounds, um, this figure illustrates the, our strategy for getting the 97 compounds for the further studies. So the conclusion of our objective one is the and enclose significant prospective in chemical profiling by GCMS. Uh, in total of 105 compounds, tentatively identified 65 are in CR and 40 in MO compounds. And few compounds we are having the good area percentage in the methanolic extract, such as N hexodeconic acid, ecocyl acetate, etc. And the corresponding constant from the Moringa velifera include 9 octodeconic acid, heptodeconic acid, and phytol acetate. So the, it could be concluded that CR and MO contains various bioactive compounds and may be recommended as a plant of phytopharmaceutical importance. I, I have a few questions, sir, uh, uh, Anjum. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, so first of all, the first question is uh, why, see these two plants are diverse plants, right? From two different families uh, and, um, and 
why do you think that you know why did you consider these two different plans for the uh, to treating the colorectal cancer what is the relationship was there any you know literature suggests that these plants have been used for the cancer treatment extract have been used for the cancer treatment in the history yes sir for the boringo volifera a citation of al asmori in the year 2015 they demonstrated that these bioactive compounds having their role in the colorectal cancer treatment by taking as a cell line sir i will show in the end part sir Mm-hmm. And the second second one is the cataranthus roseus as cataranthus roseus is a very well known plant for the anti cancerous nature now uh, a citation of 2022 i think so so in the last i will tell uh, they they have taken this compounds of the cr and they have been uh, treated this docking studies to the uh, colorectal cancer sir in the comment section i will explain sir okay so that means both of them uh, will have some common uh, metabolites uh, which may be having the anti cancer property is that is correct right common metabolites not so they are having different compounds but having their activity in same sir means inhibition activity is similar sir but, as per uh, the literature it, okay but so did you try to find out uh, whether these two you know extracts will have uh, a similar kind of uh, you know anti cancer activity sir some compounds like uh, eugenol and isopropyl uh, hexadiocan acid like that sir they are having common sir for our uh-huh. literature and to my analysis sir. yeah but i felt that uh, it should have probably had some kind of you know table where that uh, uh, the common compounds uh, between these two uh, extracts uh, so therefore those can be those compounds probably can be attributed for the anti cancer activity yes, sir. you got my point right ah yes, that's got that it. would have been probably much more helpful uh, when you are you know discussing uh, so why these two comp- you know uh, different uh, diverse plants have been chosen and uh, and why they are actually you know showing some kind of you know convergive effect uh, you know common you know uh, similar kind of effect on the uh, uh, on the treating the cancers and also that you know when you are extracting with you know methanol and uh, then uh, aquatic uh, you know uh, vehicles so did you see any common you know metabolites secondary metabolites among these two plants yes sir so sir in the figure i have shown that they are having the common structures in both compounds as four sir Mm-hmm. that's why i have deleted that four compounds sir from the 20 compounds then we are getting this number sir Okay. In the, okay. Shall I move, sir? Yeah. So there's another question is that you know, if you are using the large number, right, for you know, shortlisted this ninety uh, seven compounds for further consideration of structure based virtual screening, uh, I felt that is very large number. You could have you know narrowed down you know probably ten to fifteen or maybe or maximum twenty, uh, so that a thorough analysis could have been helped. Uh, but 97 i mean i don't know what exactly you you wanted to do with 97 number that's a large number i feel sir shall i answer sir yeah yeah sir, sir actually in bioinformatics sir when we are docking we have take the millions of compounds in the databases sir. yes yes for agree. ligand sir hmm. so uh, i tried sir along with the literature source sir, after gathering information from the literature i yeah. made an attempt sir to gather these crude extracts sir that's why i'm mentioning specifically as tentatively identified compounds so i have made an attempt so this attempt has been somewhat correlated with the literature citations sir. i will put that those references in the comment section also sir hmm. okay proceed okay proceed yeah go to the next uh, uh, chapter yeah so this is the screenshot of our first page sir so coming to our objective 2 which is identification of biomarker signatures and key pathways associated with the colorectal cancer insights from an integrated computational approach so this work has the work describing this objective is in press now so uh, in the col- uh, journal of cancer research and therapeutics so the basic idea behind our, uh, for shifting these plants with the colorectal is our main objective is uh, 
purpose of study. So correlated these plants with the biotechnology as well as bioinformatics. That is the theme we followed. For this purpose, we have chosen colorectal cancer because of the above set suggestions uh, because they are having some anti-cancerous nature in the literature source. We made an attempt for those bioactive compounds by selecting one disease. For that disease, we have carried out gene expression studies via in vitro, so nothing but in silico studies. So that will be, I am, we are dis describing in this chapter, sorry, in this objective. So these are the uh, list of tools and softwares engaged for bioinformatics studies. This bioinformatics studies can be again uh, categorized into two pathways, objective two and objective three. Objective is two is related to the gene expression analysis via bioinformatics approach. And second is the first objective with the third correlation, docking and MD simulation analysis. These are the tools. And next, coming to the methodology part of this, as we all earlier said that this colorectal we have chosen. In this study, we have chosen CRC microarray data sets with the GSC 201916 and 331133 GSC records from the database of gene expression omnibus NEO a database where we have chosen these records and after getting these records we have to normalize that raw data that raw data can be normalized by using the platform gpl 570 platform which is we are calling here as the affymetrix human genome u133 plus 2 array this is the background data and next coming to the data of the pre-processing process, the probe level data which we are finding in the raw files will be converted into corresponding gene symbols based on the annotation field uh, defined in the specified platform. Platform here nothing was GPLS 570 and the background correction and the normalization of these raw data can be done using the RMA method. RMA is nothing but robust multi-chip averaging method where the method is used to fix the intensities, measure intensities using a package of R. Means in the package of R, we give the data in the, um, what we are doing, we give the background data for that one in the R package. And to simplify this into the comparisons and screen out those genes which are differentially expressed between the CRC samples as well as the control samples. So finally, our theme is to identify the DEX, differentially expression genes, which we are conducted by using the bioconductor package LIMA. And uh, for this one, the criteria we followed is the criteria for the identification of the DEX is genes with FC value greater than or equal to 2. FC here is nothing but fold change and FDO is nothing but false discovery rate less than 0.05. Um, as per the literature, sir, in the previous uh, studies, the genes uh, that are differentially expressed will be taken between the range of 1 and 1.5. Now, in the recent era of 2000, after 220, uh, sorry, 218, like that, most of the most of the authors took FC as 2, so greater than 2. That's why I have also taken that uh, FC as greater than 2. And those graphical representation of the DEX will be performed in the R software environment. So coming to our methodology part of the uh, objective two, first we have chosen the NCAGO database in order to get the GCS profiles, cohort profiles with the respective numbers. Then we gone for the platform where we have got from these two cohorts is 241 CRC samples. They can be categorized into 46 uh, benign tissues and the 195 malignation tissues. There we normalize the data by RMA method and the identification of the DEX will be done by the LIMO package. And after that, finally, we got after these two analysis, we got triple two one DEX. A large number of DEX will be obtained. For those large number of DEX, we have performed some few of our uh, functional analysis. So like GVO and tech pathway analysis, nothing but gene ontology and coyote of encyclopedia of genes and genomics for pathway analysis. And after getting this pathway, we moved forward for the those uh, proteins, how they are going to be interacted. That can be done by using the software of string, nothing but protein-protein interaction. And the, the mode can be performed by using the models are going to be um, uh, output of after the protein protein interaction that we are calling as module detection which can be performed by the m code software 
and after this getting this protein protein interaction we go on this uh, how they are correlated with the other diseases or our colorectal cancer that we will perform with the disg analysis by using the software disg net and after this we you and just after getting here in the disg net we will get the whatever genes we are getting the final genes we are getting in the hub genes as the uh, as, as the final genes only for our verification purpose we gone for the gepa analysis nothing but gene expression profiling interactive analysis to give to give a comparison between the two samples whether they are or whether they are uh, upregulated or donated just we are giving an analysis for the purpose so coming to our results spot the now the figure one illustrates the normalization of the samples using rma method means raw data can be transferred into the uh, fixed intensities and the second figure illustrate the volcano plot displaying the differentially expressed genes between colon cells and normal children. This criteria we have chosen here the FC value, FC value between minus two. I have uh, we already told this is the range uh, where we are going to analyze at that particular area only, where we got the gene expression variations of four five one one eight annotated tropes are presented in volcano plot by highlighting the depth. So, shall I take water? Sorry for that. So next, uh, next is that, that this pre-processed data was analyzed and triple two one decks were obtained between the CRC normal cells of these one two eight six are upregulated and nine nine three five are downregulated. As it is a huge number, we can send this data into the top fifty mode. It means we are going to generate the heat map for the top fifty differentially expressed regions. Among these, this figure illustrates the top fifty exponential genes. 25 are upregulated and 25 are downregulated. Here, the red color represents the upregulation port, green color representation, uh, represents the downregulation port, and the black, no significance levels in the expression analysis. So, after confirming the number of decks, what we have done, we've gone for the functional and enrichment analysis, where we have gone for the first one, GO ontology, and in the cluster profile in R, and that shows both downregulated and uh, regulated genes. This uh, GIVO is particularly enriched in three processes, basically the biological processes, molecular functions and cellular functions. This, uh, this figure illustrates the data, means how these genes are going to be interacted in that particular process. The degree of size of this uh, is uh, corresponds to the how much activity they are having in respect to pathways, sorry, in respect to processes. For, this is the figure for the upregulated decks and this is the figure which illustrates the down regulated debt in respect to processes. And next, after getting this uh, processor, we go for the enrichment analysis by the uh, KEC pathway, where we are getting the uh, pathway analysis, means uh, in which pathway those genes are going to be upregulated or downregulated. Here, for the upregulated genes, they are mainly enriched in the not like receptor. Uh, signaling pathway, etc., and for down regulated genes enriched in FOX4 signaling pathway, AMPK signaling pathway, etc. So, after after getting this disk and GIVO analysis, we again perform with the another one, which is nothing but how these proteins are going to be interacted with each other. Means these decks are going to be interacted with each one of the proteins, where we are calling as protein protein interactions and the hub gene identification. This is the final stage where we are getting the hub genes identification. Means the objective is closed here. Uh, the protein protein interaction network was generated for all the above decks using the string database. Uh, a network of 2032 two nodes and 24844 edges was obtained. Uh, nodes are nothing but the proteins we are calling, and the edges are nothing but the connectivity we are getting from the figure. I'll show in the next figure. After filtering genes with the degree cutoff area of greater than or equal to 10, this is the criteria we followed, sir, for in order to reduce the huge number to the uh, somewhat extent. Uh, 1295 nodes and 12799 edges were left. After this, this two 1295 genes were imported into Cyto Hub, uh, where we are waiting our final list of the 20 hub genes. Those names are displayed here. Depending upon their uh, degree, 
nothing but this degree is also evaluated by the 10 parameters where we are calling as cutoff criteria greater than equal to 10. We find these uh, 20 hub genes in the uh, 20 above hub genes, uh, stat tree is having this number. Why we have chosen stat tree? We will discuss in the later figures. So next coming to the protein protein interactions, we gone for the module analysis where actually we got the module analysis into four four modules we got. The module four is not enriched in any pathways of the cake. That's why we have skipped that part and we have found only the three modules, which we are calling as module one, module two and module three. And the respective criteria we followed, we are already mentioned in the screen. And these are the P, uh, sorry, P or PF388, RNF217 and PLA2 were found to be the seed proteins of those clusters. For uh, starting of the cluster, we need a one basic protein. From, from that basic protein, these are going to be communicated along with that and give the illusion of the figure. So, this we are calling as interaction network of the three one. P uh, in the module one, PP. Uh, I am unable to show that point. Okay. Next, next coming after getting these hub genes of the 20 hub genes, we go on for the interaction network analysis where we are dealing with the diseases, uh, how these genes are going to be correlated with the different diseases. Is there any genes among 20 genes correlated our colorectal cancer or not? Here, after performing this, we are going to observe that top 20 hub genes are correlated with some other of cancers also, especially this STAT3 is showing the correlation with the colorectal cancer carcinoma as well as uh, colorectal neoplasm, whereas the other genes are having their role in the directly or indirectly. Uh, suppose uh, after, uh, after this uh, analysis, we gone for the pathway analysis of those 20 hub genes by uploading into top gene, uh, th where top gene a software or parameter like that, there we got the 33 significant pathways which are having at least five of these protein each means one pathway if you are saying that it is a pathway there we, we our genes should have the five proteins at least means five genes so this can be again divided into subcategories majorly the signal transduction as a uh, stat tree is mostly involved in the signal transduction processes i am mentioning this name here only in addition to this 15 pathways were also upregulated this can be displayed in the table this is the table uh, in specifically as as we have chosen STAT3, I am mentioning this pathways names because cytokine signaling in immune system where STAT3 is very majorly involved, I am telling here they are having the STAT3 and in the signaling by interleukins means whenever the STAT3 is going to be um, activated, there we are having the signaling of the isoleukins IL-16 like that where we here also we got the STAT3 and for other patterns like interleukin 4 and 13 signalings, we are at least having the STAT3 where it is showing that it is upregulated. Sorry. And next for the FOX4 signaling pathway, which we have got in the GVO analysis of our genes, there also the STAT3 is going to be involved. So based upon the factors of the uh, based upon the factors of uh, disease gene network analysis as well as the pathways, we are going to decide a few a few genes which are uh, which are active in the colorectal cancer. For this purpose, we have gone we have selected or chooses five hub genes. Those hub genes can be again. Uh, gone for the expression analysis means by using the GEPI software. In, in GEPI software is based upon the, the medium expression levels of the mRNA. This doesn't give the exact why we have you know, choose this particular genes based upon some literature source as well as some importance in the these genes in the signaling pathway as well as in our previous one. We have chosen uh, these five compounds where uh, we have gone and we have chosen the STAT3 and this is the expressions level of the figure where we have chosen GEPA software. In the GEPA software, we again chosen the data set of COAD, nothing but colon adenoma. In that colon adenoma sets, we are having only the, uh, this number T is equal to 275 and N is equal to 340. This T represents the tumor cells present and the N represents the normal cells. Means this co-expression levels can be carried out between the healthy individuals as well as the 
pollen cells there they give the idea of this genes start so um, coming to our conclusion of our objective where we have gone through data sets um, among this triple two one dex or uh, applied at the screening step and filtered one to nine five gene nodes in protein protein interaction network analysis and finally found 20 hub genes by cytohub which may have their importance or critical roles in the progression of crc uh, mainly, uh, more importantly, further clinical pathologic and processing investigation reveal means here we have taken just expression levels for our, our idea because we have performed 20 hub genes. We can't go like that. Just we have picked up some of the hub genes that reveal that five of these hub genes, nothing but ATM, CAT, POL, or 2E, and STAT1 and STAT3 might be the might be the novel biomarkers for CRC. So this uh, identified biomarker sign signatures during this study deserve further clinical experimentation and uh, uh, further uh, biotechnology tools to uncover the underlying mechanism for precision medicine approaches to treat CRCs. So this uh, this objective is in under pressure. Yeah, I so, I have few few questions about uh, on this particular sub, uh, objective. Uh, so you have, you know, executed the various bioinformatic tools. So, so to sort out uh, some, you know, biomarkers uh, of which that you, know, you got ATM, CAT, uh, you know, fall, yes, yes, etc. Uh, so, but this information is already available, right? So you, if you look at that uh, the colorectal cancer database, probably you will find out uh, okay, what are the, you know, marker genes which are. Um, uh, you know, already associated with the uh, disease progression and yes. their mutations pretty much uh, because colorectal cancer is uh, uh, is as a result of the mutations in the APC gene. Okay. Uh, I think adenopolyposis coli gene. Yes, 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 yes. Right. That is a basically yes. tumor suppressor gene. And yes. here the STAT3 is basically, you know, it is mutated in most of the cancers. Okay. It's uh, uh, Right. Yes, so uh, the, the, my concern is that probably should have you know picked up uh, some specific protein, uh, okay, uh, which is very much uh, particular, you know, specific to your coral ca uh, colorectal cancer, uh, because this is something like you know non-specific, which is present in you know, almost you know every cancer. Uh, that's what I felt. What do you say? Sir, uh, from the sir, um, as you said is right, sir. Uh, Stat three is uh, nowadays having a dual nature. You are disconnected. Percent of the cancer Stat three is there, sir. Uh, I think you know you got disconnected somehow, uh, Anjum. Can you explain once again? So that's why with this point we have chosen further analysis to go to the stat sir. We have references, sir. I will I will put that one in the comment section, sir. No, the, there was the... a, you know there was you know internet uh, disruption was there, so I I could not hear you. There was a break. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, shall I repeat again, sir? Yeah, please, please once again. Sir, actually, STAT3, uh, from the previous uh, sources up to 2018, sir, STAT3 is taken as the tumor suppressor gene in almost 70% of the cancers. But after the citations, few citations, which I have listed out, sir, in the comment section, and I am telling now here that uh, this citation, this STAT3 is having the uh, um, both uh, that's um, both uh, oncogenic signaling as well as tumor suppressor gene because no one predicts particular this is a tumor suppressor gene or this is a oncogenic scene. That's why some of the authors and majorly in 2002 also, so I'm having that citation right now in the September where they have taken this TAT3 as uh, the biomarker. Means TAT3 inhibitors are going to be developed. Uh, uh, sir, more clearly I will mention in the comments sir, with uh, along with the reference the start 3 is not a tumor suppressor it is a pretty much oncogene i don't see any you know a cancer where that start 3 is a, a tumor suppressor which gene, which cancer it is tumor suppressor 
sir, uh, shall I shall I show that reference, sir, where they have uh, demonstrated and suggested that point, sir. Which, which cancer? Which cancer it is? Uh, sir, they, they did not. They didn't mention any cancer, but they said that it is having the dual role. No, no I no, have no, that no, literature no, no. citation, sir. No, it doesn't work as a tumor suppressor because I worked on STAT three. I you know for several years, so I know pretty Sorry. much about STAT three. Uh, so it's a you know basically it's an oncogene. Yeah, it's it's a basically oncogene. Okay, fine. So what about this ATM? Why did you take the ATM? Is also tumor suppressor gene. See you. Uh, so that is another point. That comment that I made. Uh, uh, yes, in, sir, I, yes, sir. Uh, right. So. So, yes, ATM sure. is a tumor suppressor. It is also mutated in several cancers. And uh, so, if you are trying to identify any, you know, metabolite that can act as an inhibitor, uh, you should not consider the tumor suppressors. Rather, you should consider the only oncogenes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly, sir. What you are saying is absolutely right, sir. So that's why, sir, when we go on for the next objective, we screen this with our uh, tentatively identified compound, sir. Where we got only docking is better affinity was found only through the stat three, sir. Not all the, um, not that four uh, genes, sir. So oh. we have taken uh, because in the top twenty genes we got this one also, sir. ATM, but we have not moved with the ATM studies for the further set. We have chosen oh, okay. only STAT3. Okay, fine. Okay. Shall I move, sir? Yeah, but in your earlier data, so where, just to go back a few slides, this uh, box plot, box plot, yeah, here, STAT3 is down. Uh, sir, uh, this this means, sir, here the number of samples they have taken on the y-axis is potent only 30 numbers, sir. That's why we are getting this, uh, uh, what we are saying, uh, controversy between the genes which we have got with the yeah, so other one. You should have, that's why you should have taken uh, some other database, uh, probably Oncomine database or maybe TCGA database. Uh, so where that there are thousands of samples are there. Uh, because see, this uh, data is, you know, is contradictory because you, know, you are trying to okay, prove sir, that, sir. you know, STAT3 is an oncogene and then, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, targeting with these your metabolites uh, doesn't make any sense. Right. So I would have considered that, you know, the STAT3 should be, I don't know, this is very weird because, you know, STAT3 is most of the time it is upregulated uh, in cancers. And this cancer, you know, you are saying because of the number is less, so the number of samples are less, so therefore it is uh, down. Uh, but usually uh, it shows that, you know, uh, overexpression. Hmm? In future, I will show, sir, what you are saying by taking those data uh, data sets, we will perform further analysis sir, okay. for not taking this time. Okay, proceed yeah. to the next one, yeah. Our third objective, studies on STAT3 using phyto compounds of two medicinal plants by bioinformatics strategy. Sorry. So, here we have put few of the reasons, sir. We have selected STAT3 only for structural virtual scheme. From the figure uh, 4.8, it is evident that STAT3 is maybe responsible in colorectal cancer pathways and colorectal neoplasm. This is the figure, sir, which illustrates the disease gene network, sir, this gene net analysis. From table 4.3, the pathways which have shown in the table, there are also STAT3 is going to be upregulated in some of the pathways. And, and initially, we performed docking studies to all these five protein targets with the tentatively identified compound. So, this is an attempt so we have made. And from those compounds using the Schrodinger soup, the output file suggested the STAT3 showing better binding affinity than others. So we finally select STAT3 as our protein target to carry out the simulation studies. So uh, this is the methodology we have followed where we have taken the user interface and from the previous objective we have chosen STAT3 and further we gone from the PDB uh, protein data bank with the ID 6QHD. After getting this, we find out the active site residues by pymol. And after finding this, we go on for the GCMS uh, GC uh, bioactive compounds 97, along with the existing inhibitors for CRC, nothing but regurofenib and irinotecon. There, we perform the docking. After performing the docking interactions, we go on for the ADME filters, where ADM is nothing but adsorption. Uh, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. This uh, quick prop in the Schrodinger's 
uh, scrolling the shoot uh, removes the false uh, discovery compounds means the compounds which are not at a good pharmacological position they can be skipped out and finally give the leads which are having better pharmacological properties after this getting this pharmacological properties having the leads we have chosen lead 1 and lead 2 for the further studies of molecular dynamic simulation using the software desmo so coming to our results part this is uh, this figure 4.1 shows the co crystal structure of the human tree in complex with the DNA and having the active site residues so and so, which we are uh, comprises slicing 340, 341, glycine 342, valine 343, and serine 465, around four angstroms. After the docking process, we got these leads and they represented in the table form as well as the comparison form. This table form gives the binding energies of uh, top. Were top leads along with the references, nothing but regnoferab and ironotecon. This can be illustrated in the graphical format by suggesting that the lead one is having the binding energy of minus 7.266 when compared to the uh, existing inhibitors, nothing but minus 40.64 and minus 6.155. So, after getting these leads, we go on before finalizing the top prime molecules during docking, we crop tool. Uh, in the Sprodinger suit, Lipensky we are calling, was uh, applied to remove the false compounds. Means uh, the compounds which are not having any activity at all will be uh, will be skipped out and have, it doesn't show the uh, pharmacological nature. So details of all these uh, leads and published inhibitors of ADME analysis are well represented in the in this table 2A, which specifies the molecular weight uh, like that. And the on table 2, they were having the log P values and the rule of five, uh, log of PP blood brain barrier, log KP like that. So coming to the uh, uh, interactions of the lead one with the stat one, here we got the lead one, nothing but the, the lead one for our name is pyrrole 3, 4 C, pyrrole 1 C carbolic acid in the red color with the stat three, uh, three represents an aroma. The interaction residues are going to be displayed in the right panel where we got the hydrogen bond interactions to one wall interactions and salt bridge interaction was found for the lead one. And similar approach was performed for the lead two where we got the two hydrogen bond interactions and here no salt bridges were found. And for uh, existing inhibitors, regnoferum, where we got hydrogen bond interactions along with the van der Waal residues and it also shows pi pi stacking, pi cation residues and halogen bond. And for ironoticon, we are also get this uh, hydrogen bond interactions, salt which concentrations like that. And after getting this, these are the, this, these figures are the top two leads and uh, top, uh, top two existing inhibitors. And next we go on for this lead one and lead two with the objective of who to evaluate the conformation stability, means nature of the proposed drug complex to these compounds as well as the published inhibitors for about 100 nanoseconds through Desmond software. Each trajectory was uh, scrutinized for stability configuration over by taking parameters of RMSD, RMSF, and inter and intramolecular interactions, which are monitored in 10416 trajectories. So for the MD simulations, the energy plot uh, displays like this. For about 100 nanoseconds, our, uh, our docked complexes are showing the um, binding affinity stability exactly with uh, different energy sources, means average total energy and potential energy has been shown. And this can be uh, same done to the other samples of lead 2 and regnoprop and ironotecon. And next coming to the RMSD, RMSD is nothing but root mean square deviation, which we are going to perform to check whether our, uh, whether our samples and the stat one is having the stability throughout the end or not. If, if it is having the fluctuations at the end, then our, our samples is not going to be stable. So now just RMSD, RMS, uh, intermolecular interactions reveals that the most of the compounds are having the stability or not. We are checking through MD simulations. These are the background data, five angstroms, background, five angstroms, see like that, and the 
this figure for rms of per lead one shows the overall rms of protein was maintaining the steady state between 3 to 6 angstroms and average rms of the c alpha were falling below 3 angstroms and lead maintained below the 0 0.5 angstroms uh, and the what are the molecular interactions that we are having after simulation that we are calling as post dynamic simulations these are the ones the means post dynamic interactions where we are getting the hydrogen bond bonds in the chain a chain b and some additional ionic contents or other some other molecules and for similar way is performed for the lead 2 uh, where we are having the rmsd of overall pi angstroms in the backbone and these are the background data for that one and rmsf for it also maintains the rmf below 2.5 angstroms and these are the molecular interactions residues we are forming after post dynamic simulations for the chain a chain b and in addition to that we are getting the hydrophobic interactions and water molecules and similar way was performed for the regnofenib and we are getting the uh, steady state between 4.8 angstroms and RMSF for 1.2 angstroms and molecular interactions. Interestingly, this compound is having one pi pi interaction also with the chain of instead of portal. And ironotecan shows the six angstrom backbone steady state. And for RMSF, we are having the 1.14 angstroms and the molecular interactions were performed for all those things. And these are the, in the tabular form, we mentioned the other uh, uh, non-covalent bond interactions after uh, simulations for lead one, lead two, regnoparab and ironotecan. So the conclusion part of our motto was to find the uh, more useful antagonist lead molecules against STAT3, which causes colorectal cancer by using tentatively identified compounds from the two plant sources. So here we are getting this point. And finally, the results of MD simulations revealed that lead one is showed the good stability throughout 100 nanoseconds with an average of RMSF, RMSD, five angstroms. And RMS remained consistent with the steady state between three to six angstroms. And post dynamic interactions were observed to remain stable in all the trajectories during MD simulation runs. Therefore, it is also stated that the metal ion interactions have a significant role in the design of drugs as they have strong influence and drug specificity and metabolize, metabolization and our analysis represent probable leads which would hinder the stat expression levels in CRC patients if they have gone for the further experimentation. So now shall I move to the objective for sir? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. I don't have any questions here. Coming to our objective four, which is basically the last part of our research analysis, nothing but the green synthesis of ruthenium oxide nanoparticles using those two plant sources. This work has been described, the, the, sorry, the work described in this objective has been published in the Journal of Cluster Science Springer. So the first point to why we have selected plants only means uh, when compared to the chemical reagents, this, uh, this doesn't require much chemicals. And also this technique is pertinent at room temperature and pressure, thus saving a huge amount of energy. That's why we have chosen the greener approach for the nanoparticle synthesis. And the source material we have chosen are these two plants and the metal precursor is the ruthenium chloride. And the method we have followed for this one is an important one where we are calling as bioreduction calcination methods, which defaults our work with the previous ruthenium synthesis nanoparticles. So uh, why we have chosen ruthenium oxide only? Means as per the report of the Gupta and Mishra, it, it is a review article, sir, based on the ruthenium, all the uh, ruthenium containing nanometers, uh, uh, including chemicals also, described that the poor availability of the data and encourage the scientific research and green synthesis of ruthenium nanoparticles. Little research work is available on ruthenium containing nanoparticle synthesis characterization and its application. So we have gone through this approach. And what we do after getting the biosynthesized ruthenium nanoparticles, we have characterized that one by using some techniques. And after that, we have gone for the application by using electron based assays, nothing but we are calling as in vitro assays for DPPH, H2O2, and catalytic degrad sorry, degradation and kinetic study of MB dye and antimicrobial nature. So, coming to uh, methodology of the electron based assays, DPPH is a purple colored dye, which uh, the color, the discoloration of this color illustrates the how much uh, how much our sample is going to be antioxidant whether it is having antioxidant nature or not that can be illustrated by an visual color change from the purple color to the yellow color so the method we have followed is the 
brand williams method and the control we have taken is ascorbic acid and concentrations as, as shown in the figure so as shown in the slide and optical observance at the pi 17 nanometer for h2o2 scavenging activity even though it is not a radical species but it's a minimum concentration affects the cellular response in the cell that's why we have chosen h2o2 and the control uh, method followed is the nagar et al and the control we have taken is ascorbic acid and concentrations similar and the optical observation was taken at 230 nanometer. For antibacterial studies, we have chosen four test microorganisms, three of gram negative and one is gram positive. Um, e. coli, Klebsiella okay, uh, pneumonia and Pseudomonas aeronogenes are the gram negative and uh, Staphylococcus are the gram positive. And the method followed is our uh, method, which we are calling as agar well diffusion method. And the concentrations we have taken is 50 for the ruthenium oxide nanoparticles and 25 for the plant extracts. And positive control we have taken is tetracycline and negative control leaf extracts. And the inhibition of zone around the wells was measured in diameter after incubation. So next coming to the methodology part of the catalytic activity. Catalytic activity is uh, a catalytic activity is done by taking the organic compound of MB dye, nothing but methylene blue dye, which is a, a colored dye. The heterocyclic aromatic chemical compound was subjected to the reduction by employing our leaf extracts as reducing agents and their ruthenium oxide nanoparticles as capping agents. In order to assess their efficacy towards dye removal percentage degradation and also evaluate their absorption kinetic studies. Sorry. For the catalytic activity, we followed the method of Edison and Seturam. And uh, here we have taken the time interval as a factor 15, 30, 45, 60, 120, 180, 240, and 300 minutes. And the absorption maximum range we have taken between 400 to 750 nanometers. And optical observance is 664 nanometer. After getting the degradation activity, the degradation we go on further to the how much our samples are going to be degraded. This can be done by using the absorption kinetic studies. This absorption kinetic studies taken the parameter as a time where we are taking the concentration of our dye as 10 ppm only. Okay. Next, after this, the method followed uh, in order to evaluate our uh, investigation, we follow the equilibrium absorption data, which can be employed by using the pseudo first order and pseudo second order isotherm models. So the parameter I've chosen is the contact time, and this is the formula we followed for the calculation purpose. And for absorption kinetics, we have gone for the first order reaction of Lager and first order and pseudo second order. These are the equation. The importance of the absorption kinetics is uh, the rate constant ratios. Nothing but in the first order reaction, K1 values are important. In the second uh, order kinetic model, K2 values are important. This K2 values use the correlation between the absorbate and absorbent. Here our absorbate is the ruthenium um, oxide nanoparticles and absorbents are the leaf sources, which represent the rate constant between the these samples. So all the statistical analysis for the methodology what we perform in triplicate Mayo and SD was examined for all the assays. One way ANOVA with Dunnett test was followed um, and P less than 0 0.05 was considered as statistically significant using graph pad prism and all other graphs were done using the origin software. So coming to the results of our objective six, this is the slide which gives the um, data of the UV visible spectral analysis. The insert figure gives an indication that the first uh, indicated the indicated that the color change visually color change from the yellow color to the greenish yellow color to the black color indicates that ruthenium oxide nanoparticles are formed. And after forming, we gone for the spectral analysis where this red color represents the ruthenium oxide nanoparticle formation. We are obtaining at 320 30 nanometers for the CO. And this black color represents the leaf extracts of CO and blue color represents the RUCLT solution. And this has been similarly applied for the Moringa also, which gives the um, absorption takes for that particular 320 nanometers. Next, we've gone for the X-ray diffraction studies, where diffraction studies use our, our analysis of both the samples use the six diffraction studies uh, along with the different lattice parameters. And our sample is uh, 
uh, compared with the GCPDS data. This GCPDS is nothing but Joint Committee on Powder Diffraction Studies, which is giving some number for particular molecules. So, if our molecule is ruthenium oxide nanoparticle, that it should have their match in the GCPS data. Here, we are getting the GCPS data with the orthorhombic structure. And next, we perform the vibrational analysis. This vibrational analysis is performed to give the uh, spectral functional moieties which are present in our samples. Here, the this uh, two tables represents uh, represent the FTI spectra of CR ruthenium oxide nanoparticles and MO ruthenium oxide nanoparticles. Uh, the small peaks in both the figures 717 and 461 use the confirmation that our sample is present and these are going to be reduced by characterizing that group trace material of RUOH and for MO CH binding which might be due to the reduction of RUCLD2 uh, ruthenium oxide nanoparticles and other some uh, some important things are observed observe at various wavelengths sorry wave numbers strong absorption and absorption band like that uh, respective to their functional group. Next, coming to the TEM analysis, this TEM analysis is performed to know the morphology and the size of the nanoparticle we have synthesized. Here, we perform at the four different magnifications, 100 nanometer, 50, 20, and 10, and also SAED pattern is also followed, where which we are calling that uh, selected area diffraction, which gives the importance of their crystalline nature. The dots, each dot... Yeah. So this insert figure gives the information about the respective cell. And this, uh, the size of the nanoparticle is drawn by using the image software. So B represents the image software evolution. And next we perform the EDX analysis, which use the elemental composition of the ruthenium synthesized nanoparticles. Here, in addition to our ruthenium, compound other compounds are also found which are due to the presence uh, which which come along with the biomaterial even after calcination process even after calcination our ruthenium is going to be retained means here for the CR we got RUL with the 41 percentage and for uh, moringa we got 24 percentage and after this, we again perform with one another parameter, nothing but dynamic light scattering uh, using the Malven Z zeta sizer. Here we got the uh, average size of the nanoparticle in large number diameter 295 for CR and 224 Dumbo. This could be concluded that this large diameter of ruthenium oxide nanoparticle was due to the unequal size with few agglutination in nano clusters as uh, it is uh, correlated in the figure of uh, TEM. Here we have got even though the even though we got the number even though we got the spherical shape but some agglutination is seen in this figure. That's why you are getting the large number. And this is co well correlated with the results of Kanana operation. And next to the result part of the DPPH scavenging activity. DPPH is a purple color dye. The discoloration represents the uh, anti uh, scavenging nature of that molecule. Here, B represents the CR uh, DPPH and C represents the MO. This color chain visually indicates that our sample is going to be having more antioxidant nature. But there is an inverse relation exists between the antioxidant activity as well as IC50. IC50, here we have taken the parameters IC50. The more IC50 means we are having the less uh, antioxidant activity. If we are having the IC50 values less, then we are that sample is having the more antioxidant nature. So far, our samples, ASA is nothing but the ascorbic acid. And when comparing this with the ruthenium oxide nanoparticles and leaf extracts, our extract of IC50 of CR or u photo NPs shows 12.27 with the range of 17.79. And similar uh, activity and parameter is performed for the H2O2, where also we got that CR ruthenium oxide is showing the first to ranking the first plus in IC50 values. And after that, we perform the antibacterial activity for those four samples. Here, the highest uh, zone of inhibition was found in the Glypsiella pneumoniae, and least was found in the Staphylococcus aureus. Sorry, Staphylococcus aureus, suggesting that uh, these nanoparticles exhibit high, bac uh, high bacterial activity against four bacterial strains by the agar diffusion method. The synergetic potential of the ruthenium oxide nanoparticles over bactericidal action was not very known understood it could be thought that 
cellular proteins may become inactive in after treatment with ruthenium oxide nanoparticles. Next, coming to the result part of the catalytic activity, the insert figure shows that our sample is going to be degraded with the color change from the blue to the colorless in both the figures. Um, and uh, this process, the degradation process was completed at 300 minutes, I think at 5 hours for both samples with an encoach time of 2 to 3 minutes difference. And in all the figures, we got the steady dropping in the absorption value of the dye, which reveals the reduction of the MB by considering the baseline elevated peaks of ruthenium oxide nanoparticles. So, so, this can be illustrated in the form of table as well as figure. This table gives the raw data and the figure illustrates that the absorption removal percentage for both the dyes uh, was more absorbed in the um, Catharanthus roseus containing ruthenium oxide nanoparticles as 79.02% than MO 68.110% uh, with the um, with taking the parameter as function of time in time. And the absorption kinetics values has been displayed in the table one and table two. Table will use the values of the K1 and K2 rate constant values. Based upon this one, we are getting the correlation analysis, nothing but linear expression of them, which we are calling as R2. If R2 is having the 0 0.9 level, it gives the linear expression levels. Uh, and after that, we have taken the parameter as 10 pp uh, parts per million concentration only, which use the reactions of the Langerhans first order and second order in respect of time. Here, time is taken as an important parameter. And these are the values, and this is the um, graphical representation of the kinetic study of both the samples. So finally, after our kinetic study and catalytic studies, we are going to confirm uh, compare the previous literatures also. It could be summarized that the reduction rates of the current work are often better with the previous reports and considered to be good nano catalyst using green synthesis eco-friendly method. So, coming to our conclusion of our objective, it draws attention towards the synthesis of ruthenium oxide using leaf extract as a source material from RuCl3, which is quite stable in solution. The so prepared the ruthenium oxide are well characterized with features of orthorhombic crystalline structure and average particle size between 4.6 to 5.6 from TEM analysis. And uh, uh, this biosynthesis normal ruthenium oxide are much stable even at higher temperatures, means the calcination is performed for all the cases and after the calcination process. Among these two plants, CR derived ruthenium oxide exhibit excellent antibacterial activity against Regripsilder nocumae, uh, as well as highest antioxidant activity and good catalytic activity against MBA. So, thus the present work is considered as a positive for the development of the benign and inexpensive process with easy, sorry, easy synthesis, high antioxidant activity, and effective catalyst for degradation of pollutants using ruthenium oxide nanoparticles, making it more interesting for future studies. This is the screenshot of our first page. And coming to the summary and conclusion, uh, each point having this objective in conclusion, the outcome of GCMS reveals 105 compounds among 65 Andrew? procedures. Sir. Uh, yes. In the sixth, uh, seventh object, right? Sixth object, uh, sixth seventh, chapter seventh. seven, uh, sixth uh, chapter, and okay. you have uh, which objective? That is third or fourth one? Fourth one, sir. Uh, the fourth one, right? So okay, let me recollect. See, you started with that, you know, using the. Um, you mentioned that you are going to use the uh, biostatistics analysis, right? Yeah. yeah. Statistic yeah. analysis, sir. Anova. Uh, statistical SSS. In the entire objective, where did you use the statistics? Just show me the data where you have used the statistics. <laughs> By using the graph that presents, sir, which is uh, online available at that time, sir. No, no, no. I am not asking about that. Uh, which Slide, data sir? that you have applied it? Yeah, you know, where did you apply the bio statistics? Statistics. Ah, okay, okay, sir. okay, sir. Sir, in the antioxidant assessor. Sir. Uh -huh. Where we have performed IC50 values sir, by taking one way ANOVA sir, with the Dunner square, IC50 mm -hmm. values are going to be calculated for both the assessor DPPH as well as H2O2. And so what is the value for this? For which one, sir? Uh, this one, did you do the P-value for this? DPPH, sir. Yes, sir. I have mentioned yeah. here, sir. IC. Let me see it. ETH, 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 sir. Yes, the electron based uh, in vitro assay, sir. Ah, yes, sir. I don't see any error bars and uh, Sir, uh, I am 
Sir, I am not representing in the uh, bar form, sir. I have represented in the IC50 value, sir. Because most of the literatures uh, nowadays is asking the why we can't perform this IC50. This is the inhibitory concentration, no, at the 50 level, why you cannot? Actually, in the data in brief, sir, we have performed bar, bar related graphs, but uh, they, they, they are asking the, to perform the IC50 values. So, uh, for our fourth objective, I have not gone for the bar one, means aspect not slighted. I directly gone for the IC50 values, sir. Yeah, but this you did not, this data doesn't represent that you have used the uh, graph pad prism. This is like, you know, you have done it in the Excel sheet. The data. Yes, sir. sir, the graph point prison is used for the characterization purpose sir. for UV spectral analysis, XRD, FTIR, uh, like the uh, HR MM analysis. No, but the uh, question is that how did you de how did you derive this you know, IC fifty values uh, without performing the the graph point prison? the raw data should be taken in the excel sheet sir this excel sheet data could be transferred to the graph pad prism where we have collected the one way anova as our tool in that anova they will asking the triplicates data and in the triplicate data we are going to interpret some parameters that are available in that one and after that we are getting as the final result of that one in the raw form sir uh, ic50 values they are represented uh, there sir where we are getting the two p value significance values p less than 0 0.05 p less than 0 0.01 like they directly give that two values sir ic50 values when we are putting the our uh, uh, control one and to our data they directly compare that one and they give that one data sir as ic50 values the next slide next slide show me the data in the this is h2o2 scavenging value yes sir yes sir okay yeah, but these data, I think you should have these graph also should have been represented uh, from the graph ad analysis. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Uh, uh, this is like, you know, in the Excel sheet you have done that would have yes, given the background? much better data. Uh, okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, fine. Go to the end. Go to the conclusions. Fine. Answers to the queries raised by the arduators. Uh, number one is the examiner commented that why you have taken a large number of compounds for the bioinformatics analysis, sir, and also suggested that further cutoff should be taken. Sir, kindly noted your point, sir, but uh, with such literatures, after getting large number of tentatively identified compounds, in general, in bioinformatics, we will take millions of compounds or databases. For plants, we cannot take that much data. Just we have made an atom. Why can't we take this plant uh, resources for the docking courses directly? Whether it comes our data in the uh, positive way or negative way, but we made a trial, sir. We made an attempt. Uh, luckily, we got this uh, compounds are going to be docked with our compounds. Sir. So, after analyzing the reports of few authors like Central Raja et al. in 2015 and Corona et al. 2019, we followed the same where they have taken the GCMS data compounds and they directly dog that one. And for Purana et al., they have taken the data sets from the database by taking 63 compounds from the CRS. So we followed the same. In our future studies, we may consider your valuable suggestion and besides implementing two sets. Okay, proceed. The chapter four. So has commented that why you have shifted the this investigation to the CR. I think you have answered this question, Anjum. Fine. Okay. I, because I already asked this question. Uh, uh, maybe other reviewers' questions. Because I think you answered all my questions now. Uh, other reviewers' questions, you can address it now. Other reviewers cannot give any queries, sir. They no, okay, recommended fine. that the thesis is good. Okay, good, good. Okay, fine. So, I have one last question about this, you know. See, when you are actually uh, performing this uh, bioinformatic analysis of, you know, uh, uh, online, you know, screening uh, of the compounds, so probably you should have uh, used the kinome, uh, you could have, you know, segregated the uh, pathways uh, uh, based on the molecular nature uh, like you know kinases uh, transcriptional analysis uh, sorry transcription factors or maybe receptors so instead of looking at the you know, uh, you know broad range and wide range of the uh, molecules uh, you could have separated at the beginning of kinomes uh, kinases uh, receptors and then uh, like that uh, and then you know choose uh, which of the druggable molecules 
So that could have been a better answer. I, I felt approach, uh, instead of, you know, going uh, in a kind of, you know, uh, biased or, you know, um, uh, quietic approach that would have been a better approach. So that's what I felt. Sure, sir, uh, so sure. anyway, I think, you know, uh, this is fine. That was my, you know, uh, particular observation, uh, could have been suggested, you know, uh, could have been followed. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. I will follow sir, in your future citations. Sir. Yeah. So, so finally, I acknowledge my supervisor, sir, my esteemed advocate, Dr. K. Yozini, sir, madam, and the dean, faculty of sciences, Dr. Krishna Reddy, sir, principal also, and the external expert members, sir, Professor Brahman and the Manavad, sir, very thankful, sir, and all the faculty members of our department and other departments also, and a sincere thanks and gratitude towards my our advisor, sir, Dr. A. Umamahishwari, madam, from the Swims University, and Pradhan, sir, from the Bioinformatics ICMR, New Delhi, and for Sandeep, sir, in the... Now, uh, Jamia Ahmedad University, right now he is in assistant professor, sir, in uh, Sikkim University, I don't know. And finally, the Manne Kumar, sir, the scientist D in the NIN, who have helped in the bioinformatics analysis. And the research scholars, especially the Pallavi Saxena and Dr. K. Sudhir from the Tirupati and New Delhi, they help a lot in their bioinformatics analysis too. And uh, now teaching staff of our department, lab mates, agri science folk, family members, friends, and finally the UGC for awarding the MNF fellowships with a grant. So these are our research publications. So thank you, sir. Thank you to each and everyone who helped me in all the time, sir. Questions, questions from faculty, students, this is scholars. Okay, if there are no questions, sir, principal, sir. Hello, principal, sir. Yes, ma. Yes. I am ready. Yes, Please. Please, sir. We are we are profusely thankful to Professor Brahmanandangaru who made the PhD thesis without bias. He reviewed excellently at this juncture of time because of the volatility of the PhD activity going across the Indian scenario. Uh, for the benefit of the scholars and also Professor Brahmanandangaru. Among all the universities in Andhra Pradesh and also in India, this is the only one university which is having the, one of the university having the five-year integrated course in bioinformatics and uh, so biotechnology and bioinformatics. Uh, and also it is the need of the uh, day for uh, the humanospheric activity going on a different phase due to the pandemic situation and the natural disasters and also the price escalation and the human uh, war in the, up, in the northern hemisphere. And the volatility is so, it's very high. Still, the Indians, and in particular we in Andhra Pradesh, this is the one of the uh, rural university here. Carrying out research is a bit difficult. My faculty members, my colleagues who are in the Department of Biotechnology and Bioinformatics, all of them are doing extremely well in the academics as well as in the research. So they are near at par with the, the standards of uh, global scenario. If you see this uh, citation index, H index, I index also. Uh, the girl, uh, the uh, PhD recipient, 
been uh, she is also did well uh, but being a young girl hopefully she may continue the research further and uh, for, as a post doctoral fellow and i congratulate dr e as unisa the the research the research supervisor and the research scholar for choosing a novel topic and i have no hesitation to declare that from today onwards she can be uh, add the suffix doctor after completing the formalities of the course thank you professor bhumanandan garu and my colleagues in room are in the online uh, i by name i everybody i congratulate the, the department in fact please Uh, thank you thank you sir thank you for inviting me uh, as an external expert i think you know i really uh, thoroughly enjoyed while reading the uh, thesis uh, in fact i had an opportunity to uh, uh, you know review her uh, research work prior to this phd thesis as well as a uh, research committee member uh, so i think she has you know very eloquent and uh, you know uh, strong communication skills uh, and in addition to that she has you know uh, knowledgeable she is knowledgeable uh, yes i am sure that she will be successful and uh, you know because you know most of these you know <laughs> biotechnology faculties and then bio, uh, biochemistry and as well as botany no, i know no, most of them are friends yours is a multi sir yours is a multi disciplinary right and some yeah. of the things what she what she made the morphological study it is yes, based yes. on the literature but not based on the uh, actual uh, reading the uh, quantitatively this is a right. qualitative sense they will say that this can be nano scale this yeah, and that yeah, yeah. <laughs> and statistical <laughs> analysis also yes and uh, as some of the packages the bioinformatic tools yeah. it is a black box to her yes. she will learn later yes yes you give some input you she, she will get an output <laughs> yes yes obviously we have you know most of the you know universities do not have you know the same facilities to some perform uh, but this girl the girl went across many places they right. by seeing that uh, she could yeah yeah I, and uh, yes 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 i understood sir but i think it looks very and also sir i i forgot one thing she was recently we have given her uh, young scientist yeah. wow. award by me by, i have made, kept a jury okay. uh, sir sivi raman's national science day she okay. bagged Uh, that uh, yeah, award also in scholar award in scholar award very very nice very nice guys nice. okay okay yes, anyway, so thank, you, sir. Yes, sir. thank you so much and then you know uh, i would like to also congratulate uh, dr riya junisa i think she has been yes, uh, uh, nicely supervised uh, and then uh, thank you thank okay. you sir <laughs> and uh, dr anjum now you are onwards so uh, call and congratulations once again huh? wish you all good good luck with your you know future endeavors So thank you very much for your valuable suggestions, valuable questions, and and sparing your time, your valuable time with us. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you, principal, sir. Krishna Reddy, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Thank Shall you. we conclude, sir? Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Congratulations. Ah, thank Brahma, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, madam. Okay. And thank you, sir. Anjum, Anjum. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Ram Krishna, sir. Ram Krishna, sir. Thank you.